Hello everyone, uh, I'm Alex. I am in the office of the CTO and I work on the Semantic Kernel project, uh, which uh, hopefully as you see uh, my screen is an open source project uh, that's been around for, or that's been open source for at least, at least since March. Uh, and we've certainly had a fair amount of traction, a fair amount of interest and contributors already. So certainly encourage you if you'd like to, to go check out the repo, give it a star and all along. In terms of history, uh, so the Semantic Kernel project uh, was actually started in the office of the CTO almost, well, actually no, over a year ago now as an internal incubation with um, within Octo. And uh, the sponsoring CVP, uh, Sam Sklache, who was the founder of Google Docs, he actually joined Microsoft um, also around a year ago. Uh, and his mission was to unify all the systems around how products are built uh, within uh, Microsoft. But one of the big things is around AI and large language models, which uh, the office of the CTO team had early access to. And what we found was that this model was certainly very capable, very powerful, uh, and it really sort of opened our eyes to what was possible. And again, this is all pre chat GPT. So you know, before uh, it kind of got into the the, the public's uh, mind, right? Um, but yes, so with that, right, following a similar sort of playbook, if you will, right, Sam Scalache uh, assembled th this team in Octo to effectively try to unify the efforts around building with these large language models. And hence the Semantic Kernel project was, was created. And we decided to actually open source it because uh, we found that it was something that should be built with the community uh, at large. Uh, it should not just be one product team's kind of pet project. It should not be, you know, something that is is just very specific to to one org. It should actually be, you know, not just Microsoft either. So uh, we wanted to put it out there to learn alongside the the community, and hence, right, the Semantic Kernel uh, exists. So I'm, I'm sure I don't have to go into too, too much detail about this point because I'm sure you and all your customers are, are feeling this, right? This is a certainly a big moment in, in AI that, that we're experiencing. Um, it's gone from AI being a, a cool or maybe interesting feature to like, oh, wow, we can actually uh, build real products, um, real semantic products that that make it feel actually truly intelligent. Um, and a lot of that was due to the the rise of, of ChatGPT. I'm sure even OpenAI did not expect the popularity of their of their product. Um, but you know, putting it out there, showing off the capability, uh, it really captured the the public's imagination to to what's possible. But as mentioned before, right, what we found uh, within the office of the CTO team um, was that while these models are certainly super powerful, right, GPT-3, GPT-4, um, and, and others, they they can introduce some challenges, right? One of the biggest challenges could be hallucination, right? Uh, that the model can just make things up um, and not be grounded in, in what you truly like wanted to do. And some people have sort of tackled this or tried to uh, fix this problem by doing effectively prompt engineering, this sort of new discipline that's come out to uh, help steer these large language models to, to, to do more, um, to do more, what do you want to call it? Like guided tasks or guided, guided things. And, and it's really actually a new way of, of programming, right? Before people would, would write code. If you're a data scientist, you'd be writing, let's say Python code and you'd have a, uh, a training set of data and um, a test set of data, you'd be fitting a, an algorithm on that training set to and evaluating on the test set. Um, and, you know, that is a, you know, machine learned kind of pipeline or a workflow. Uh, but in this case, right, these large language models don't need to be trained, uh, at least certainly not trained from scratch. And, and they just can actually just be steered, right, steered by 
by uh, a prompt. And this paradigm is called in context learning. Um, and it really is part of one of the key principles of the semantic kernel, which is uh, ask smart to to get smart. So uh, as we'll as we'll dive in, um, it really depends on the quality of the prompt that you give it and the context that you provide. So what what you see is that these model APIs are stateless functions or stateless you know, machines that take in text as input and spit out text as output. They don't ha themselves have a concept of memory. Uh, they're not going to remember the, the conversation that you had with it. It certainly doesn't by itself have access to APIs, plugins, connectors. Um, so these are all things that you would program uh, against these models uh, to introduce. So hence, this sort of situation arises where a, an SDK to, to help kind of bring these patterns and paradigms in is needed. Um, so, right, with the semantic kernel, we want you uh, and your customers to, to go from just showing off cool demos to actually building real, real products. But the, the key idea, right, is we want the kernel to sort of encapsulate all these best practices, all these learnings that were discovering alongside uh, the community and with you all uh, that these models, while certainly very powerful, right? They need the orchestration, they need proper prompt crafting uh, to really make them uh, shine. Um, so the semantic kernel, right? We'll have all these, some of these things out of the box, but we want to create a hopefully easy to use SDK so that you all can, can create these sort of things yourself as well. So in terms of the why of the semantic kernel, uh, one thing that uh, hasn't actually been talked about too much is while today everything is about large language models, the future, at least certainly in my mind, is, is actually about multi-modality, right? Models that can take in text, can take in audio, video, images, and can certainly generate all those things as well. Uh, another principle of the semantic kernel is that the models will get better, but your code will not necessarily, right? Code is often just like a snapshot in time that captures some logic, some, you know, what an API looks like. Uh, and uh, that code can often break, right? It breaks when versions change, when when data changes, when schema changes. One of the, the amazing things is that uh, if you rely more on the model to do this heavy lifting, then you're, you're in this situation where, yes, you're still writing some code, but uh, that code can be kind of better suited to, to hopefully last longer. And that's because the model is, again, doing most of the, the, the heavy work uh, for you. So, but what the kernel, what the pattern, the paradigm will, will have are these ideas of, of skills and connectors, which I go into here, which at the, the the base layer, right, is the kernel, which uh, is more or less an orchestrator. And we don't anticipate people to touch the kernel too much, uh, that unless you're doing something very specific on, on how you want to orchestrate things, uh, most people will actually be, be creating uh, what we're calling skills. And these skills effectively uh, are some functionality that you know, encapsulates the, the business logic of your domain, your your industry, and so and as such, right? You can have, you can imagine, right? If you have customers in the the in the life sciences or in in financial services or or in in law, right? Those skills can be created as like a a starter pack in each of these domains, uh, of which, right? They can be shared broadly, right? If nuance, right, is creating healthcare skills there that doesn't or that now could potentially be made available to any healthcare provider to make use of and leverage. So we anticipate and we expect people to create these sort of skills. Uh, skills themselves, just to lay out a definition, are uh, both uh, native skills or semantic skills. Native skills are code that you write in your native programming language, whether that be Python, C Sharp, Java, uh, etc. Um, whereas semantic skills are the the things that you rely 
on AI to do, right? And more or less, at least for large language models, they're expressed using prompt. Um, now those skills by themselves uh, are, you know, can be great, but I think they really light up or they are really uh, more capable when you hook in this thing called uh, connectors. Now connectors are effectively uh, external data sources, uh, APIs, some might be calling them plugins, right? That effectively bring in additional information or context so that the skills that you're creating are, are, are more rich. So I'll go into that uh, or illustrate that more um, in a bit. But you know, to kind of like draw this picture is that the what the kernel is, is that it is it is a orchestrator and it does all this sort of management of your your prompts, your chains, your long running tasks, and this concept that we're calling um, planning or the planner. Uh, and and I'll, I'll touch on that actually next slide. But again, right, this is only made possible or made enriched by uh, concepts of memory, uh, which are uh, the connectors that you bring in from, let's say, the, the Microsoft Graph or different data stores uh, or other APIs. Okay, uh, in terms of the kernel, right, the, the sort of interaction pattern that, that we see uh, developers uh, use is that it all really begins with the user ask. So that ask comes into the kernel and that uh, that ask can be like a, a query string, right, that comes from a chatbot. Um, uh, or it could be a, a goal that a user expresses. But the idea is that, that the kernel, um, its job is to take that ask and to and to, to fulfill it. Now, it can do that manually, or like you can specify which functions you want to run explicitly, um, or you can make use of uh, this concept of the planner, which effectively is an AI skill, or uh, some people may call it agents. Uh, but the idea is that the planner can, again, take that user ask and come up with a human readable plan, uh, which is effectively a set of functions, their, their arguments, their, their, their input parameters, um, and, and, you know, present to you, the developer saying like, okay, is this the plan that you want? If so, uh, go ahead and execute it. And that can all happen uh, automatically. Um, and so just to kind of illustrate this in all in one slide, right? The user ask would come in, the kernel uh, either can fulfill that ask by uh, deterministically running a set of functions, um, or you could pass it to the planner, which, the, which will, uh, based off the skills that you have registered to the kernel, um, create a plan that can then be executed, right? And again, skills need to be infused with context so that you can ask smart to get smart to the model. And though that context is built using uh, data from the Microsoft Graph, from different APIs, different connectors that you would have. And, and that's it, that, that is the sort of uh, pattern. Um, and you can see that ideally, right, if all this works, uh, you'd be able to uh, really meet the the expectations that a lot of users have for being able to do or to have AI uh, really intelligently uh, accomplish things for them.